<laughs> hey, kid, you wanna try a new mouse? No, I'm pretty busy, Rory. It's ergonomic. Dude, I got like tons of work to do. I can't possibly take another thing. No, it's pink. You could have just started with that, man. Up until probably last year, I was working exclusively on my MacBook with no other accessories. The trackpad was enough for me to edit simple videos, and I didn't think that the placement of my keyboard mattered. But all this changed when I got Carpal Tunnel. I realized that by typing furiously on my flat keyboard or by using the trackpads for long periods of time, it wasn't really kind to my fingers and wrists. These days, I've been quite happy with my current setup of a separate keyboard, a laptop stand, and a regular shaped wireless mouse. But here comes this little bean right here. Well, it's not exactly little. Logitech released its Lift Vertical Ergonomic Mouse, and it's meant to be a mouse that can realign your posture into a more natural one. It's also made to be more comfortable for small to medium hands. Now, I don't think that I need anything like this, but it's cute enough to make me want to try it. Will this mouse convert me into using exclusively ergonomic mice, or will I hate it completely? When unboxing the lift, I had to admit that it is pretty good looking for an ergonomic mouse. You know, before this, I've never actually seen an ergonomic mouse up close before. The ones I've seen online are usually masculine, angle heavy, and incredibly dorky. Honestly, I would associate something like this with something that a basement gamer would use. The lift also comes in black and white, but its pink mouse is definitely the prettier sister. Instead of a more angular shape like the other ergonomic mice, the lift is curved and almost seashell-like. The darker pink side is a comfier, rubbery section to rest your palm and part of your thumb on, while the lighter pink and plastic side is where the rest of the magic happens. Holding it in my hands, it feels big, beefy, and sturdy. Like, it wouldn't break on me anytime soon, but I wouldn't throw it against a wall to test its limits. Setting up the lift is pretty easy and intuitive even. Opening up its magnetic back, I found a AA battery already inserted in. So that's good because you don't have to worry about getting yourself one upon purchase. You'll also find a USB receiver, which you can use to connect wirelessly the old school way. But why would I even need to do that if I can connect to three different devices via Bluetooth at a touch of a button? I didn't even need to read the manual. And why would I need to? I've used Logitech products before, and I know how Bluetooth works. Connecting the lift with three different computers is pretty seamless, and I haven't faced any issues. I'd say that it's pretty idiot friendly. As for its features, the Logitech lift has all the usual ones that I barely use anyway, like the backward and forward buttons and the middle DPI switch button, which changes the speed of a mouse's sensor. If you click on the button, you get to switch between two preset DPI settings. But a feature that I actually appreciate is its smart wheel. The smart wheel, first and foremost, is a scroll wheel that is smooth and isn't creaky like a lot of other mouse scrolls. But here's why it's called the smart wheel. It has speed and precision scrolling modes that can make it a lot easier for me to browse and read through long articles. For example, if I need to scroll up on a long article, I could just simply scroll up at a faster speed. Like that, easy. The smart wheel would automatically bring me up to the top of the page without me needing to scroll multiple times. If I needed more precision in my scrolls, however, I could just slowly scroll up or down. It seems like the mouse could read my mind and scroll based on how I need it. It's similar to something called a free wheel or a free spinning wheel in some other mice, but that feature needs to keep being unlocked and locked in order for it to work. Besides the smart wheel, a really neat feature of the mouse is how quiet the clicks are. Listen. Like almost nothing. Nothing, right? Can you hear anything? Exactly. Beautiful. Now, I'm not gonna lie. It felt weird when I first used it, and it still feels weird now, a couple of weeks later. After being so used to the regular shaped mouse, it was surreal that I now had to move my hand to the side so that I could control my cursor. No matter how much my mind tried to resist the thought of using something that I wasn't used to, a part of me realized that the ergonomic mouse didn't feel that different from a non-ergonomic mouse. Well, after a while anyway. 
In fact, if I didn't think about the mouse's shape, using the lift was pretty intuitive. I could do my work and browse the web like normal. But it wasn't until I instinctively wanted to lift the lift up with my one hand and realize that I'm using a weirdly shaped mouse. At 125 grams, it feels significantly heavier to hold than my 99 gram Logitech G304 mouse. It also has a heavy bottom, which is likely because it would stop the mouse from tipping over, with the mouse being taller than your average mouse. Lifting the lift with one hand for me is harder because of the weight and shape. Okay, so it seems like a small issue, right? But the difficulty of lifting the mouse kind of disrupts my workflow. Logitech insists that the lift is meant for small to medium hands. And I have small to medium hands, but smaller hands probably won't be able to get used to how heavy the mouse is to be fully comfortable. Hopefully the future generations of the lift would be a lot lighter. And if you have bigger hands, the mouse itself might feel a little too cramped because the lift forces your hands to lay sideways. So bigger hands might mean that your fingers won't all fit on the sides. Now, I've only had the Logitech lift for a couple of weeks, so I don't really know if it does help with my posture or if it does prevent carpal tunnel. So far, I don't see a huge difference with my comfort compared to when I use my regular mouse. You'd think that something so dramatic looking would feel dramatically different as an experience. That isn't the case, as it just switched my wrist placement a little bit. According to some sources, something like the lift can allow you to use it in the natural handshake position, alleviating pain and stress injuries. An ergonomic mouse is also designed to require less grip strength than a traditional mouse. That means that your hand will supposedly release the tensions of the tendons in the wrists, allowing for less fatigue and less chance of aggravation over time. Now, I don't know if I feel all that yet, but I do feel less pressure on my fingers. But did it feel like it changed my life? Probably not. I don't think I felt strained enough to get carpal tunnel by using my own G304. I think what makes the biggest difference pre and post carpal tunnel for me is getting myself a good setup for my workplace. So having a dedicated mouse and keyboard as well as a laptop stand to raise a screen so I get a better posture helps greatly. It may come as a shock to you, but I'm just like an average consumer who uses her laptop to watch videos and work. I'm not a huge gamer, so I can't really say the lift really made a difference in gaming. Although I did try going around VR chat and Second Life and I didn't really see any problems using the mouse, although I didn't see anything extra great that came from using the mouse either. But after using the lift for a while now, I'm still not completely convinced to move over to the ergonomic side. I prefer the lightness and shape of my regular wireless mouse, and I don't see a huge difference in comfort either. I was more impressed with what else the lift had that wasn't the vertical ergonomic shape. It paired seamlessly with my other devices and I never had a problem with the connection. The mouse also seemed to glide pretty easily on not just my rough leather-like mouse pad, but also on my table and smooth gaming mouse pads as well. Any flat and hard surfaces seemed to work fine with the lift. The lift uses an optical tracking sensor which uses LED lights to track the movements and it's apparently best used on opaque surfaces like paper, but they won't work very well with reflective surfaces like glass. A slight downside to the lift is that a mouse this fancy still uses AA batteries. I would need to worry about purchasing AA batteries for when the mouse dies, but Logitech's site promises me that the power on a AA battery can last up to 24 months, so I guess I don't need to worry about that for now. That problem is for future me. At 299 ringgit, I thought that it was a reasonable price to pay for a fancy mouse like this, but it's probably one of the more expensive ones out there. You can get cheap ergonomic ones for under 50 ringgit. My own G304 is about 179 ringgit, and it doesn't even let me connect to devices with Bluetooth. So while the lift costs more than 100 ringgit, it seems worth it because of how well its performance is and how easy it is to use. But would I buy the Logitech lift? No. Its ergonomic shape isn't enough to pull me to the dark side, but if you're looking to buy a good mouse with the lift's best features like Bluetooth connection and a fast scrolling wheel, the Logitech MX Anywhere is a better option for about 230 ringgit. It's just not as adorable. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like or dislike, just, you know, it's up to you. Also write in the comments of what you'd like to see next and also subscribe to Soya Chinchao if you have not already. All right, that's it for me. Bye-bye.